Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today we're going to talk about the block swap for 2021. So I'm going to start by showing you the block that I have chosen for the block swap. And I wanted to keep it simple but still make it so that people could have some sort of an autograph block that they could sign. I will be adding a link to this video that's going to give you written instructions as well as the rules for this swap. Please be aware that if you don't follow the rules, you stand a high chance of your blocks not being swapped and being returned back to you. So this block here, I call it the Evening Star. You can Google it by that name and sometimes with Evening Star patterns, they'll have different things in the middle. The most common thing you'll see is just a two color block where this whole center section would just be one square that's the same color as your star points so I have made it a little bit different so that we can use it as an abalone block as well and so I have put three strips in the middle for my square instead so I'm not gonna actually talk about rules on this video I'm just going to give you a link to that and we're just gonna talk about construction of the block at this time so I have made instructions for this block in electric quilt. So I will make sure that I use these diagrams that I'm showing you as we go along. What electric quilt does is that they'll give you instructions for how to cut out the particular pieces. Let me zoom in. So for those of you that don't want to go over to the website uh, to start sewing, but you may want to go over to the website for the other information you're going to need. But um, I wanted to zoom in so you can see here what we're going to be cutting to make this block. And so they're starting with the blue fabric first. And the first thing they are talking about is the squares in the corner. They have an alphabet over here that says A. And then in the diagram, you can see where A is in the diagram. And for this block A, you're going to need four patches that are two and three fourths square by two and three fourths so i also went to my go cube system i have a nine inch go cube and i also have pulled the number that corresponds to what they're telling you to cut here so if you wanted to use your go cube you could use uh, cube number two which is a two and three quarters inch unfinished square it finishes at two and a quarter so that would be uh, not cube number two, but die number two in cube nine inch finished. Okay, so this is your square two and three fourths inch number five five seven one seven. So you need four of those, and then for B, which is also in the blue, you're going to need four of those patches. Now, if you are rotary cutting this, you cut one five and three fourths inch square and you cut it twice diagonally and you'll end up with your four patches that you need once you cut it twice diagonally. So I have those fabrics here. I have my four two and three quarter inch squares. This is actually going to be my background. And then I am going to, I also have a five and three quarter inch square. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you, I'm just going to cut that twice diagonally. And when you're cutting this, you don't want to move the square once you do your first cut you just want to turn your ruler or rotate your board if you have a rotating board or a smaller board that you can just turn and then go ahead and cut 
your pieces. Now we have our piece A and B. So die number four is your quarter square triangle, four and one half inch finished square. It's five, five, seven, one, eight. So the next thing they're telling us to cut is the actual star points for your flying geese unit. And that is the red fabric here. It's piece number C over here on the chart. And so what it says is cut a square three and one eighths inch and then you're going to cut it once diagonally so you need eight patches of that so if you need eight patches and you get two pieces from each square then you need to cut four squares that are three and one eighths of an inch so I have cut my four squares I have already cut three of them once diagonally so this is my three and one eighths inch square and I'm just going to cut that once diagonally. And now I have my eight pieces with the others that I pre-cut prior to the video. Now if you're going to cut this with the AccuQuilt die system, you would be using your nine inch cube die number five and it is five five seven one nine half square triangles two and one quarter inch finished square and then the last sections that you need and it's on the second page here you're going to need two patches in one color and then you're going to need one patch in a white so what I did is I cut two pieces in the pink and then another piece in the white. In this white, you must use Kona cotton, Moda solid or good quality muslin that's white. Don't use a white tone on tone because when you write on that with your marker, it's going to um, have like lights and darks because of it being on that painted surface. So please do not use any white fabrics that have a painted surface. And then you're going to cut these pieces, one piece in white, two by five inches, and two pieces in a print, two by five inches. And that's your cutting per block. And now we're going to come back and show you my fabrics again. Okay. So one of the requirements is that you have to have a light, a medium, and a dark. Um, so that your block will contrast once it's made. It doesn't matter what position you put your light mediums and darks in. I'm going to show you the difference in this block here where in the center I use the, my dark in the middle on the opposite side of my signature piece and on this block I have switched the position and made my light inside here and my blue is now going to be my star points so it doesn't matter where your light me medium and dark fabrics go you just need to make sure that you have them so if you don't want to use a print in your background you could just use the same muslin fabric in your background if you like I think they'll be more interesting with uh, a different print so just picking three fabrics that just looks pretty decent together and just going from there we're actually going to go to the sewing area and I'm going to show you how I will be sewing this block I will be using my die cutting system to cut the remainder of my blocks these are the only ones that I have where I have actually that I'm going to be actually using this system I'm gonna go into the sewing room and we'll start back up there so we're now going to start sewing our blocks together and we're actually going to start with what most people will consider to be the hardest part of this quilt block is making flying geese and so I am going to just show you this method because of how EQ is telling us to cut uh, if you got a different method for making flying geese 
that finished the uh, finish this size then you're more than welcome to use that as well so I'm going to go ahead and put so basically we want to put take our quarter square triangle and we want to put two half square triangles on each side so in order to do that I am going to sew a triangle on each side flipping them right sides together and then I'm going to sew one quarter of an inch seam. And I'm going to chain piece all of my pieces through at the same time. So I'm going to do it to all four of them. Just snip these apart. And now we want to press this seam toward the half square triangle. And instead of using my iron right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use my wooden press. If you start your fabrics, then you can not have to use a heated iron for every press. But we do want to make sure that we press our block. And I'm trying not to press too hard on this um, Bernina system here. I normally press flat over on the other side here. But you wouldn't be able to see. So there we go so far. And now our last one is still under, under the needle here. And so now our next step is to go ahead and put a flying geese on this opposite corner and then we're going to stitch down. So we'll just get these done just like we did before. So now we're just clipping these apart and we're going to do the exact same thing and press these seams over. And I'm going to do the rest of these over to the side because I don't want to crack my So now I have my four flying geese units and technically this should measure two and three fourths by five inches and you can square that up if it's not to that size. Also you want to trim all of these dog ears off. So you can just use some scissors and trim all the dog ears. At this point, you could go ahead and press your unit if you like as well. So I'll heat up the iron back here so that I can have it ready. And just give them a little quick press. And when you're making these blocks, you do want to press and not iron. You don't want to move your iron. You just want to pick it up and move it to another spot. You don't want to rub and roll it to another spot.
Okay, so we've trimmed all of our dog ears there. And we're currently waiting for the iron to heat up. And so while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and sew these three strips together. So I'm going to show you that next. So we're going to take two of them, right sides together, and we're going to sew our seam. On this one, we're going to press our seam toward the print away from the center piece that we're going to be writing on. And then we're going to add the other piece of print to our bottom. And again, we're going to press our seam toward the print. Okay, and now I'm just going to give a quick press with the iron. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces pressed. I don't know if I can get my design board to fit into this space, but we're going to try. And then what I like to do is lay my block out on my design board and put my pieces in the correct orientation. So we know we want our star points to go in because we want to create that star. If we turn it the other way, that's a different block. It's not that it's wrong, it's just a different block. So this is what we now have on our design board and I know you can't probably see it all but uh, I got very limited space here and the lighting is very poor because when I cut my machine light on you can barely see. So I have zoomed out a little bit just so you can see this and it's very dark here because when I have the light shining into the camera it is a little bit dark. But this is the best that I can do to show you how I'm sewing. But now I'm going to go ahead and sew this. In, this is now considered like a nine patch block. And I'm going to go ahead and sew it by flipping my rows over. Two and three. And then I'm going to sew quarter inch seam along all three of these sides. Okay, so this is what we have sewn so far. Let me zoom you back in so you can see a little bit closer. So this is what we have. And now what I'm going to do is just open this out. I'm not worried about where my seams are going to go at this point. I'm just opening this out. Alright, so I have put my pieces onto my design board that I just sewed. They're still connected by the chain piecing that I did. And now what I want to do is I want to fold these pieces over and put them on here one by one and sew them together as well. And so you can see that I haven't cut my connecting strings yet. 
So I'm just going to turn this back around so it's facing me. And I have my first piece that I'm ready to sew down. my seam so that they were facing my going towards my squares in the top and bottom row and then I pressed my seams inside on to the center square so now when we put these when I flip my rows down to sew my seams are going in opposite directions so that makes it so that I don't have to use pins but if you are new person to sewing then maybe you might want to use pins but because my seams are nested in the opposite direction I don't have to use pins to sew this I do that I'm going to go ahead and press this seam away from center so now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite end line up our pieces and so So that was our final seam. I'm gonna go ahead and press this seam. And there we have our completed block that I've pressed. So make sure you press your blocks before you send them. And then on the back side, the back side of my block is just as pretty as the front side of my block. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.